On January 23, 1897, a 23-year-old woman in Meadow Bluff, West Virginia, was found dead in her home. Although she died young and suddenly, this death was relatively normal as far as deaths go, until the supernatural came into play. This case has been called the only one where testimony from a ghost resulted in a conviction. Let's talk about the case of Zona Hester Shue, better known as the Greenbrier Ghost. Not much is known about Zona's early life. She was born in 1876 in Meadow Bluff, and some sources say she gave birth to an illegitimate child around 1895. In 1896, Zona met a blacksmith named Edward Stribling Shue, who went by the name Trout. The couple fell head over heels for each other and married in November of that year. But they would only be married for a few months when tragedy struck. Around 11 a.m. on January 23rd, Edward Shue sent for an 11-year-old boy named Andy Jones. Andy regularly did errands and chores for Zona, and Shu asked if Andy would collect some eggs from their farmhouse and asked Zona if she needed anything. But when Andy reached the couple's farmhouse, nobody answered the door. When he stepped inside, he found Zona dead, along with a trail of blood leading from her body to the front porch. After making this discovery, Andy ran back home and told his mom about what had happened. Then he went to the blacksmith shop and told Shu. Shu was seemingly very upset over the death of his wife and ran straight home. Zona's death was ruled to be the result of a heart attack, though some sources would say everlasting faint. Interestingly, the coroner reportedly later changed her cause of death to complications from childbirth. This is kind of odd since there doesn't seem to be any solid evidence that Zona was pregnant. By the time the coroner arrived at the shoe home, Zona had already been dressed in a high-necked gown with a scarf around her neck, presumably by her husband. Shu also helped prepare her body, always making sure he was the one who handled her head. At her wake, he always stood at the head of the casket. He'd also put a folded sheet by one side of her head and some clothes on the other side, saying it would help her rest easier. A scarf had been tied around her neck, her favorite one, according to him. Zona was buried in the Soul Chapel Methodist Cemetery in Greenbrier County. Even though rumors and speculation flew around town that foul play was involved in her death, it was determined to be nothing more than a tragic, natural death. Then, a few weeks later, Zona's mother, Mary Hester, came forward with a very interesting story. According to Hester, Zona's ghost had appeared to her four nights in a row. She reportedly appeared to Hester while she was praying and vanished when Hester tried to touch her. And she gave her mom some pretty damning information about her husband. Zona's ghost apparently told her mom that Edward Shue had attacked her in a fit of rage while they were arguing about a meal she had prepared for him. She said Shue squeezed her neck hard, breaking it between the first and second vertebrae. Zona's head apparently even turned 180 degrees when she said this. In retelling her story, Hester would also give details about the couple's house and other buildings in the area, none of which she'd ever visited herself. Hester went to the local prosecutor and asked him to investigate Zona's death. He was reluctant at first, but eventually agreed, and the investigation revealed some very interesting information about Edward Shue. For starters, his name wasn't actually Edward, but Erasmus Trout Shue. He'd been married twice before, and his other wives had also died under strange circumstances. One of them had even died of a broken neck. He'd also spent time in prison for stealing a horse. Zona's body was exhumed for examination. Upon this re-examination, it was found that her neck had been broken between the first and second vertebrae, just where Mary Hester said it would be. All of her other body parts and organs appeared fine and normal. 
Edward Shu was arrested and charged with murder. Before his wife's body had been exhumed, he'd said he knew he would be arrested, but that nobody would ever be able to prove he had killed her. Shu went on trial in mid-June of 1897. Almost all of the evidence against him was circumstantial. Mary Hester testified at the trial about her alleged ghostly visits from Zona. The defense claimed these ghost sightings were just dreams. Since they were actually the ones who called Hester to the stand, it's been speculated that they did this to discredit her. But if that was their plan, it didn't work. On June 22, 1897, she was found guilty of murder and sentenced to life in prison. He died there of the flu in 1900. So what happened here? Did a mother really get visits from her daughter's ghost? Or is there a more logical explanation? Let's go over some of the less supernatural theories here. The first theory is that the defense was correct and Mary Hester really just did have a very vivid dream. I don't know about you guys, but I've had plenty of dreams that felt completely real in the moment. Occasionally, my dreams felt so real that I didn't even realize they were dreams until after I woke up. Did Hester just dream up these visits and think they were real? Or did she maybe just want to believe they were real? The next theory is that Hester really did see Zona's ghost, or at least thought she did, but was coached by prosecutors to make her story more interesting. Maybe she actually saw something a little more ambiguous, a slammed door, a falling object, something that people could attribute to the supernatural, but also could just be from something ordinary, like a draft. Then her story was punched up to make it more appealing. The last theory is that Hester never saw Zona's ghost, knew she'd never seen it, and made the whole thing up. But why might she do something like this? She reportedly hadn't liked her new son-in-law from the start, and very well might have had suspicions about his involvement in Zona's death that she couldn't prove. Did Hester have a gut feeling that Shu killed her daughter and invented a ghost story to get more attention on the case? Even today, many cases are progressed or even solved due to extra attention on them, since that attention often leads law enforcement to investigate further. After Zona died, her death was reported in the Greenbrier Independent. In that same issue, a story ran about a man in Australia who was killed and thrown into a pond. Several people in his town reported seeing the man's ghost by the pond. Years later, a man made a deathbed confession. He made the whole thing up. After witnessing this murder, he was afraid to come forward with what he knew because he thought the killer might come after him next. So he fabricated the ghost sightings and spread the rumors in order to get more attention on the case so that it might one day be solved. Did Mary Hester see this article and get an idea from it? There are a couple of other bits of speculation in this case. There was a rumor that the people of Meadow Bluffs thought Hester had broken Zona's neck in her coffin in order to frame Shu for murder. Another rumor suggested that Zona was pregnant and Shu attacked her because he thought she'd been unfaithful and that the baby might not be his. So what happened with Zona's Shu? Did jurors really convict her killer based on the testimony of her ghost? Did they instead vote guilty based on other evidence? Did Mary Hester really see her daughter's ghost? Did she think she saw it and convinced herself that her daughter was still with her in some way? Or did she invent the story entirely to get attention on the man she thought was responsible? As always, I will let you decide for yourself what you believe. Thanks for watching and have a creepy day.